What role is the Latino media playing uh, when it comes to this election? Telemundo and Univision, the Spanish language media in this country, was critical of Trump from day one. Mm -hmm. Because Donald Trump announced his candidacy by insulting Mexicans. So the majority of the people who watch those channels are Mexican, like me. I was born in Mexico, I was raised in the United States, I became a citizen, but I'm Mexican. So, um, so the narrative in the Spanish language media is one of uh, extraordinary critique of Donald Trump. So Maria, who are these Latinos that will vote for Trump? So that's my obsession now, frankly. As a journalist, I've been covering these stories in the United States for you know over 25 years, um, understanding the Latino community dynamic on, on our radio show, Latino USA, um, that has a huge audience. Um, but understanding why you have anywhere from 15 to 20 or 25% of Latinos who might support a Donald Trump, what does that mean? Um, we're, we're, we have to understand it. That's my job now as a journalist. We will be covering that story on Latino USA to understand who those Latinos and Latinas are that can see themselves reflected in a Donald Trump. So the Latinos that support Trump, you know, when he talks about illegal immigrants, uh, how come they support him? I, it'd be difficult to understand why they would support him. That there are Latinos and Latinas that have been here for multiple generations and who have been part of the Republican Party for years. Um, who are or who are very attracted to the Republican Party. Most of the Latinos that I met that were Trump supporters start off as being Republican Party supporters, mm -hmm. staunch Republican Party supporters, and then they they followed in line with their party that this is their nominee. Um, I don't know if I could tell you that they just were like loving Donald Trump. I think they said this is our party and we're falling in line and we believe in him and he's a good businessman. And there you have it. But in other parts of the country, in fact, in the, the parts of the country where there is the least amount of diversity is where they have the most amount of support for Donald Trump. So it's like they're the opposite of this United States of America, but they're a part of the country. Um, so actually it is my job as a journalist to try to understand that part of the American dynamic which America is going to be more motivated to go out to the polls? White America that feels disenfranchised, unheard, that feels like it's becoming a minority, set aside, not paid attention to? Or people of color and progressive whites who feel like the America of the future is this kind of changing demographic and that's fine. They believe in it. It's what Barack Obama represents. So which one is more motivated to come out to the polls? That's going to determine who wins the election. The media has been extremely critical. Uh, what about value neutrality, news neutrality? Is it a thing of the past? Because America is still looked upon as a democracy and with extremely powerful media set up. I think you're starting from an assumption that the American media had neutrality to begin with. Um, and that's, I think, the starting question. Um, <clears throat> I have great respect for American media. I am, I am an American journalist, um, and I follow in that great tradition. But I think the best of American journalism has always been self-critical and has taken a self-critical look at, as to what did we do. It was created in fact, to say we need diversity in our media, we, we need it. Um, most of the mainstream media felt like treating Donald Trump as if the things that he was saying were completely normal was the right thing to do. It's racist, it's misogynistic, it's um, you know, Islamophobic, it's dehumanizing, it's um, whatever it is. Um, and then talk about what he said that day. But we are expected to give a kind of understanding of what happened in the world, not treat everything like it's completely the same.